In the immortal words of George Carlin, you can prick your finger, but you can't pr finger your prick. And with that, it must be time for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever expanding Geekoverse. We'll do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I am your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me on this episode, sewed to my shoulder like a second head, is my co host, Mike Kafis. Yeah, Pete, when I said make up a sewing pun, yeah. I meant. Something related to embroidery, not fingering, not. Well, you know, like pricking. when you're sewing and you can like prick your finger when you sew, because like you know, the finger and the pricking and the. You know what? Let's go back because me like being fingering. sewed to your shoulder. How's yeah. that? That was I, yeah, right. See, that was like you were embroidered to my shoulder with a head. <laughs> with a head. <laughs> a head on your shoulder. Because <laughs> like a two, cabbage. Two. Two heads are better than what? Two. <laughs> Sorry, anyway, it's inside joke. William Hammond, <laughs> owner of Dragon Wick Embroidery, has been working conventions across the USA for the last four years, bringing people's favorite fandom to life with embroidery items ranging from dice bags, patches, banners, stickers, hoodies, t shirts, tote bags, and much, much more. Welcome to the show, William. Thanks, guys, for having me today. Hey, you, oh. you, caught, you caught me when I'm a little punchy. <laughs> I, I like that, though. I appreciate that wholeheartedly. Okay. I know this is stupid. We should have, I should have thought about this before we started, but do you happen to have headphones? Unfortunately, not any that work. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we'll deal. All right. That's all right. That was my fault for... Uh, hey, not, Mike. Uh, yes. I really wish this was a thing. I, I, I think this might have been a thing. Can I, can I get this on here? Hold on. Where did, oh, God damn it. Stupid phone. Hold on. Give me a second. Here we go. Uh, can we see that? Yeah, go to the other way a little there bit. The other way, buddy. Christmas. Other way. We don't. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm looking in the wrong camera. Sorry. I got two wrong cameras. Camera. Sorry. What is what that? Is that? that? It says Christmas dinner. It's a whole Christmas dinner inside a can. Each layer oh, is a is a thing from Christmas dinner. So it has, you know, like a... Uh, uh, mashed potatoes and gravy and turkey and I wish it was a real thing. I, I think they may have made it at one time, but you can't get it anymore. We were looking because uh, if I had that, I would I would totally eat that. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not a real thing anymore these days. You know, I mean, people would buy that. I I would. It looked good. There was a video of a guy eating it because apparently it, it must have been a thing at one time, and he was eating it, and it looked good. He was just chomping away at the whole can right in front of the camera. Would you Seems like an mic? 80s thing to me. <laughs> well, this coming from the, you know, first of all, I'm vehemently against this whole <laughs> dinner in a can thing, but it it makes sense. And no offense, William, I don't know you, and I'm not going to judge you per se. This is my best friend over there, so I'm going to judge him as much as I can. You would eat fucking dinner in a can of uh, Thanksgiving in a can because you eat you eat pig shit in a can. A.K.A. Scrapple, so, you know, whatever. You know, I did research on Scrapple. You know how they make Scrapple? You know what Scrapple's made out of? It's not everything but the oink. It's not it, – it. that is a misconception. It's pig liver and heart mixed with uh, um, corn meal and um, buckwheat. Ooh. And, and there's, like, bone. There's, like, cartilage there's and no bone, bone ground. There's no there. bone or cartilage in it. There's not – no. There's no bone or cartilage no. in it. No. It's – it's actually mm. pure ingredients. It's actually a very healthy meal. Hmm. I don't have to look into that. Yeah, healthy my ass. It's, it's the other gray meat. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, anyway. We, just, we have sidetracked. We have totally sidetracked. Uh, We're talking Peter. scrapple again, Mike. How does this happen every time? Peter. Because it's easy yeah. to get sidetracked. <laughs> yes. Tell everyone how William came about to be on our show. All right. So I can't, you know, Mike, we didn't put the names down here. Uh, but we had some folks on the show, it was last year even, I think it was, uh, they came mm -hmm. on, they, they do um, charity work at conventions where they, uh, yep. they, they they bring games to conventions. And I, I'm, a, I, I'm remiss, I'm sorry, I'm so tired. We worked a convention this weekend, uh, an online convention, and we did not, we could have prepared a little bit more. We were pretty well prepared, but we forgot to put that in there, who that was and what show that was. Well, well that would be my buddy Brad Coach. He does the Wyoming Gaming Library. He takes a big... 
Thing. box a big car full of nothing but games to like children's hospitals and stuff yes. they do charity work they let kids play games all day and they help raise money for like the children's hospital and stuff like that there you go right yeah so they they had a it was a contest you won to be i mean like the worst prize ever got to be on our show no <laughs> no I'm kidding, I'm kidding. it's self-deprecation humor no no he, he actually won a spot on the show so uh we were happy that we're happy to have him on uh, it's taken a little while to get you on here only because you know trying to match up schedules you're traveling and when oh, yeah. available. <laughs> so, but we got you. We got you before the end of the year. We promised. So here you are. Well, I'm I'm here. I'm not <laughs> traveling. I just got done with DocuCon. Stars aligned to make this happen. So let's do it. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So, you are the uh, are you the the sole proprietor? Or are you the head honcho? I'm the of... sole proprietor. I am the head honcho. I am the main man in charge of Dragon Wick Embroidery. So so you run you run the company and take out the trash? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as, as we like to say. Alright, so tell us uh, uh, about just your Dragon Embroidery. Why don't you tell us like... Well, I started my company pretty much on a joke. A friend of mine told me, like, you're you're never going to do embroidery. You don't like to sew. So I made 20 patches for a LARPing event, and everyone bought them out. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to keep this going. And now I here I am four years strong, eight states in, almost 100 shows, and that guy can just stay over there. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it. No. Wow. But, <laughs> no, but, wait a minute. Hold on. So – so you say you, you sewed the patch. So did you make the patches like completely? Like you took a piece. Yes, of I I edited them. I digitized them. I vectored them to the size that my, my my machines like. I did all the stitch work. I made sure that the machines were running well, oiled and lubed and everything. I so, did. I do everything in my shop. So we have. Okay. Hey Mike, we we have one of these. We have a, a an embroidery machine at work that somebody bought for a project. You know, we built we make prototypes. So it's really weird all the equipment we have. Like you never know what kind of equipment you're going to need mm -hmm. for any particular thing. And we have one and we were going to go to this event and one of the the person who knows how to use it left. And so we were going to we we're going to we we're going to figure it out and uh, just make some shirts. We're going to get some we're going to buy some blank polos, right? And put our company or our our organization's logo on it to take to this event. And we we're like, "Yeah, that'll be great." And we started to dig into how to use the machine. We we're like, "Oh, wait, this is there's actually there's actually some shit you got to learn." So Oh, yeah. So, so tell us about this machine cuz probably very it may not be the same one, but I, I guarantee you it's very similar to the one that we have at work. Um, right. Cause, well, cause you, I you pretty much got started off of Brother Machines. Okay. I have a Brother SE625, which is pretty much how my shop got started. And that's pretty much actually the only machine I have left that still works. But, you know, it, I have – it doesn't come with digitizing software, so you have to go out and buy it. Right. Uh, hmm. I ended up having to buy a product called SoArt64, which was like the most user-friendly uh, product on the market at the time. And is do the people who run that company? Every time I have a problem, they're emailing me. So oh, wow. I'm like, thank you guys for making okay. sure I'm okay. Hmm. It took me probably about a week to finally fully really work the system on how to get stuff digitized and edited and vectored right. I am all self-taught. I have I've, I've not gone to school for this. I have not gone to any professional classes, no college courses, no nothing. I am all self-taught on YouTube and a friend of mine. <laughs> Yeah, and it's tricky, right? I mean, it's 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 more complicated than I think. You know, it's you don't you can't just like oh I'll open up and just figure it out, right? I mean, it's yeah, no, you can't just do that, man. There, the uh, pa uh, program I got came with like a two hundred page pamphlet or booklet <laughs> on how to run the software. Right. So, you probably haven't done this, but have you? Well, have you ever tried just doing the manual embroidering or just the the general stitching? I, I do a little bit of everything. You know, I also make custom costumes. I do custom heat press work. Okay. I do it all. I've actually made medieval outfits for LARPing groups across six states. And how long have you been doing this now? Uh, on a professional level, like right now, four years. But I've been doing this pretty much for like the last 15 years. So how has the process changed over those years? The the software for computer systems. Sorry, just a second. Someone's blowing up my phone here. They're gonna go on silent. I don't like you. Leave me alone. Speaking of the person who told me it was a joke, look who just texted me. <laughs> How timely! His ears must be burning. Right. 
I've actually had four different uh, styles of brother sewing machines over the years, uh, 425, a 525, and now it's a 625. And every machine gets a little bit bigger with what it can do. And whenever I get a new machine that gets a little bigger, I have to go through like all 500 images that I've already got digitized and re-vector them for the new computer. So whenever yeah. I get a new machine, it takes me about a week to get everything back up and running again. Oh, uh, wow. It's like buying a new computer, right? It's, it is. It's the same it kind is of exactly machine, like but it's always like this, this like week where you've got to like, i got to copy mm. all my files over, i got to reinstall my programs, got to get all my settings, hook my printer up, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. Now, do they do? Oh, you're phone? not wrong. <laughs> now, do do any of the machines hook in, hook into like a phone app? Can you can you do like phone apps with any of them? Uh, not my embroidery machine, but my heat press machine. It I can uh, have a little remote access uh, app on my phone if I wanted to do that. Okay. But you know, my phone tends to crash a lot, so I'm like, yeah, I'll just do it manually. <laughs> okay. So what's let's say, uh, Pete wanted to get into the embroidery business like what would be the investment and what would he have to get uh well, how much money would the average person have to spend is like i want to start embroidering i stuff. think when i started my business i dumped about 1400 to 1500 in cash on machine supplies thread fabric needles scissors cutting table about 1500 is what i dropped four years ago I mean, that's not too bad. Like, say, you know, if you wanted to be like a professional DJ or something, you oh, know, yeah. you, you, you spend a lot more money on equipment and stuff. I mean, that's that's not too bad. And you know, think I run into a lot when I go to comic cons with other people that do kind of the same thing I do. They're like, we're not making money fast enough. I'm like, you've got to market yourself. You know, I, the at DocuCon, I was beside a lady that makes custom hats for a living on site at conventions. And she's like, I've been doing this for eight years and I can't make money. I'm like, well, do you have a website? Do you have a Facebook page? Do you have Instagram? Do you have something to promote your work? And she said, no. I'm like, well, then there's your problem. <laughs> so are you able to take your equipment with you and do Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Matter of fact, I, like I said, I just got done with DocuCon. It's all broke down in the back of the truck. The embroidery machine that we have at work is like a it's like a big sewing machine, right? I mean, like like you the size. Got a six to yeah. twelve needle machine. Yeah. I've got a little bitty one needle machine right now that does all my work. Huh. The little one, the little brother one, you can get at Walmart for five hundred bucks. Huh. There you go. All right, so Mike, uh, got a profession for you. Make me some wish yeah. hats. But <laughs> uh, I can do that actually, but I can't sew directly onto hats. My my uh. The one that does that is broken, and it's oh. going to be another two weeks before it's repaired. But what I can do is I can make little Velcro patches and put Velcro on your hat and do like a little removable patch. Uh, we can wait for the uh, machine to get fixed. <laughs> we, like, we like the ball. We'll ball out. We'll ball out. Um, okay. So, I, 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 first of all, I'm like shocked that you, you can take – all right – uh, are you driving to all these cons, or do you have your? Do you fly to some, and you got to have your equipment sent there too? Do you ship it out? The ones that I fly to, what I mostly do is I just go and I take orders on site. I'll make up a bunch of pre-made stuff. Okay. Like uh, example, the Power Ranger stop or Ranger Stop Seven in Orlando, Florida. I just went to. I took about a week off of work and made nothing but Power Ranger stuff: flags, patches, dice bags, tote bags. I made it all and shipped it to a friend of mine's house along with some order forms. And I have about six custom orders I got to start making tomorrow and get them back out to Orlando. That's awesome. So let's say, okay, so you, you, you've seen our, our, um, our logo, right? Oh, yeah. Let's say it would be something kind of like this big, right? Oh, yeah. Like what, what, what would something like that, like if, uh, if we wanted to get that, like what would that cost? And and we're, this is a we're, we'll talk about the friends and family discount, but like you know, like what what would what would John Q Public? What does uh, Jenny and Scott in the chat room? Hey Scott, um, what would they have to pay? Well, it usually depends on the color. If it's like one or two colors, it's like two or three bucks. But if it's like six to eight colors, it's like anywhere between five to eight. For like well, a per pet now is there? Do you do you do like a set fee? Like well, I'll do. It'll cost you X amount to do this set fee for yeah, this particular setup, one. Right? No, I don't charge setup fees. I really don't because you know if I can keep the image forever and use it for you know yeah. If say Scotty bought it and then Amy wants to buy it, if I can just keep it and reuse it, I won't charge a setup fee. But people's personal ones that I'm not allowed to resell, then yeah, there's usually like a. 
five to ten dollar setup fee. Huh. Okay. Dude, that's totally worth it. Sorry, and then so like that would be for something like that, like for a, like something like on a shirt, like a shirt. Oh yeah. Thing. Like that We're, little polo guy on your shirt. I do him oh. for about a buck. Yeah. All right, hey, you so, know, uh, so you're talking two, three, four. So you go like polo guy and then the real estate of a polo guy, a dollar per polo guy. Yeah. That's about, nice. okay. That's good. We, and and uh, we have to talk because we, we actually have, our logos are all, because I'm, I'm a graphic, I also do graphic art design and I do all my stuff in vector. So all my stuff's already in vector. I could, I could send you EPS files. Yeah. Is it bad that when uh, I won the chance to be on your guys' show, I kind of got your image and already vectorized it for my <laughs> setup? Is that bad? <laughs> nah, it's fine. No, it, it's not wrong at all. Wrong. Cool. But it's, I already have it ready to go for heat press and embroidery and car stickers and vinyl cutouts, whatever you need it to be on. Some Damn. might say it's the opposite of bad. Yeah, that is. I don't know what that is. is. I'm always so bad that it's good. There you go. <laughs> and we do right, have so, hey, Mike. We so have a con. What? We have we have a con coming up. We might want Dude, some stuff. Yeah. Th th right. This 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 is uh this is a good thing. I'm telling you, <laughs> I knew that this was going to be a good thing. I didn't even think I had that in mind. I swear, when I was putting nope. these questions and everything I didn't else, think about it. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't even think about that. But we are we're we're talking anyway. Yeah. For now. <laughs> I want to know this, and this is almost like I'm spoon feeding this because you can't use the canned answer of because <laughs> it's cooler, it's more awesome. But why embroidery over, say, silk screen or some other type of uh, process? Why? Why do? You, why would you say that's better? Embroidering is better. Well, I've seen silk screening you know, break after a couple of washes and start to fade in the wash. Yeah. The embroidery will last forever as long as you take care of it and clean it on a you know not like a daily basis but on a regular basis and the the stitching is so tight in there that you know you can't even break it with a with a knife you actually have to cut the image out in order to replace it mm -hmm. it, it just it holds up a lot longer and it just looks better you know you're able to catch more detail in like say a face with embroidery than you can screen print in my opinion anyways yeah all right well, you're yeah, I agree. The only one that I counts agree. Here, cause, right? I was going to say, your page is the only one that counts here because you're the expert in the room. <laughs> well, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but a little claim to fame on being an expert. Do y'all guys watch football at all? Mike I do. I I'll get whatever this is. He will not go ahead. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite team? Baltimore Ravens. Okay. Not the, quite the team I was hoping for, but we'll go with that. From the time they were a high school football team to the point they won all their Super Bowls and to the point my grandmother died 33 years later. For 33 years, she designed, crafted, tailored, him, altered, seamed, sewed everything for the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders. Wow. Mm. So are this, you this still, are you still in blood. contact with the said cheerleaders? <laughs> no, <clears throat> not from the 80s. I, I lost track with those ladies a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, we don't want the from the 80s. 80s those, yeah, anyway, well, you know what? Those... <laughs> Those ladies. Never mind. I'm, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> my girlfriend's watching. I'm just gonna shut up. Oh, um, come on, Mike. I actually met a uh, uh, an ex Colts cheerleader once. Oh yeah. Yeah. Of, I, was she from? She was a Baltimore native. I guarantee mm -hmm. you. She smoked, oh, yeah. and she just yeah. you know was like, hey, oh, honey, hi, how are you? Yeah, hey, really hon, good. Oh, I remember the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on my stoop down on Baltimore Street. <laughs> Johnny oh, Unitas. Oh, I loved him. Actually, uh, you're doing the accent all wrong. Dear Johnny Unitas down there on the stoop there, there, hon. <laughs> we were drinking some O's, or we were drinking some bows, watching the O's. <laughs> drinking some daddy bows. <laughs> that sounds like my grandmother. That's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so all Mike, right. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this next one. I like I like this okay, question. Go ahead. Go ahead. What what is the craziest thing you've ever been asked to embroider? Please say a penis. Please say a penis. All right, go ahead. Actually, I was just at DocuCon, which is Colorado's uh, 18 and over event. You can't get a ticket to go into the con if you're under the age of 18. Oh. You can't do it. Oh, oh this oh is going to be good oh then. Oh, my. But I didn't do a penis. I didn't do anything sexual related. But a guy walked up to me dressed up as a half-naked Tony Stark. And said tomorrow he's coming as the cowboy guy from Overwatch. I can't. I don't. I've never played Overwatch, so I don't know the characters. Neither have I. But we've we've uh, all just lost a little bit of geek cred. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I don't really have much. I know what Overwatch is, but go ahead. <laughs> oh. And he walked out to me with a pair of his underwear. 
He goes, would you please put the, tar the, the, the red dot sight right here on the front and high noon across my ass? Okay. And I was like, I'll, I'll do it for 10 bucks because this is too funny. They were clean, so right? So I have a picture I can send you guys of what that <laughs> looked like in a few minutes. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Hey, you know, it's funny you say half-naked Tony Stark. Mike, do you remember Dragon Con that we went to where there was a Tony Stark in a Speedo and had the Iron Man helmet and he was behind yeah, me? Yeah. We were trying yes, to get... Yes, I do. Oh, no, or was I pointing at his stuff? Is that that one? We were I don't know. We have a lot of crazy pictures. I was looking at some the other day. I did send you the crazy pictures of me and Tony Stark. Okay, cool. We, remember All we were right. trying to win a contest? What was his name? Uh, 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 oh, mm, the guy who did the uh, uh, cons, uh, did the uh, parties. Um, Mark Baggett. Oh, uh, remember? Yeah. It was. Uh, we were trying to win this contest. We were taking some pretty uh, interesting pictures with cosplayers. Yes. <laughs> if you're not, he would have won that hand, hands down. What happened? What did we say? Daku Khan, you would have won the crazy photo taken hands down. Okay. So – uh, let's see. Do you have like a most cherished or best piece you've done? Mm. You know what? Speaking of, you know, penises and stuff like that. Uh, one of my best friends in the whole world is a professional dominatrix for a living. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she had me make up a sign that says, you know, you can't enter the room while sessions in progress. Right. That has to be my favorite piece of work because now it's immortalized in the BDSM community. Nice. Nice. Excellent. Uh, uh, you know what? I, I was I, I posed this question, but it's kind of like, duh, now. So yeah. I'm just going to say that, you know, it, it's, it's kind of amazing that being a uh, doing embroider, you have to be an artist as much as you have to be technical. You know, oh, you have yeah. to be able to do all the technical aspects and know the computers. You have to know the equipment, but you also have to be an artist in order to be able to make it all come together. Oh yeah, like uh, for example, on that uh, one of my orders at DocuCon, uh, people bring me images on flash drives like all the time. Every convention I go to, I can even be walking down the street at Walmart or going to get something from the gas station. People are like. Would you please take a look at this and see what you can do on the flash drive? <laughs> uh, at DokuCon, a lady brought in an image from one of her favorite anime characters. I do believe it was from Inuyasha. But don't quote me on that. I haven't slept in almost 26 hours, so forgive me. I would, but she I wanted the Tetsuya. Yeah, it was from Inuyasha. It was the Tetsaiga and the Tensega. She wanted me to split the swords apart, stand them straight up and down on, uh, and side by side instead of crossed. Mm -hmm. and put them on a, on a dice bag. So it mm. took me about six hours to get the swords uncropped, un, uncrossed, cropped to the right way, and back to the right sizes. Mike, do you know what this reminds me of? What? Gym stories. This is tattoo. You're, you are the thread oh. version of a tattoo artist. Well, thank you. I actually take great pride in that because I have a lot of family members in Texas that own tattoo shops. I mean, think about it. Hey, could you put yeah. this on a thing? Hey, could you tattoo this on? Yeah. It's just, it, you are the tattoo art. You are the, you, you are the tattoo artist of the embroidery world. <laughs> you know, right. I never thought about that until you just said that. That's going to have to go as my new slogan. I'm the tattoo artist for the embroidery world. You're there welcome. You yeah. Thank you. I, I swear to God right now, I'm not high, but yes, I want you to, I want you to hear me out. Hear oh, me no. out on this. Okay. Oh, God. Here it comes. All right, because, I mean, I literally just had a moment, okay? Because, Pete, when you were talking about tattooing and embroidering, I'm thinking, holy shit, we need to combine the two, and there needs to be some synthetic type of way that we can embroider, but, you know, like a tattoo art embroidery, and it can stay, and it's healthy, it's, it'll work. I mean, the technology and, and the health, everything would work, but awesome! No. That would be kind of cool. Ex except that's not going to happen. That's just not – the body doesn't like that, Mike. It doesn't – Yeah, the, the tip of my finger don't like that. Right. There's hurdles. There's, there's, there's things to get past, but we can do this. <laughs> Guys, Dude, we can I, do this. I guarantee Judge, you – I guarantee do you it. there is some uh, – 
alt culture person right now that's just like, yes, you must make this happen. You know, these people do scarifications and they do like right. the, where they have the uh, the piercings and they thread their back up. And so mm -hmm. Why I've been not? to some of those parties. OK, like, like, you know what? What if you first did scarification to make it so that it, it would take, you know, a, a real quick sure. note on that. They haven't done that for tattoos, but they've done that for piercings. A friend of mine has like um, hoops up her back, and she interlaces them with twine yeah. to look like it's a pair of shoes. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've seen that. Or, or like a cor yep. corset kind of thing. Too. Right. Yeah, yep, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Like, I'm not kidding. I'm like, it, it, not obviously like embroidering thread as it is this now, but some sort of a you almost like a nano type old... thread. Or like, or like stitches, like a, like 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 surgical yeah. thread, right? But no, I think like your body stitches, okay. No, but it, it's very body... thin, like nano type. That it would be like so nah, not, a little larger that. than nano, not like you one don't, one. You don't want... Adam I'll tell you thick, why you obviously. don't want that because if it gets caught. So we go from slice. talking about Tony Stark to now trying to get Tony Stark to make some yeah. skin apparel thread yeah. that way you can stitch somewhere. Okay, right. I think this can happen. It's got to have the right. Uh, you know, what do you call it? Like maybe the width of hair or something. It's got to have the right thickness, the right diameter, right. the right measurements, the right weight. Strength, strength, weight. Yep, everything. Can you it would Tony work. Tony Stark spraying that nano stuff on somebody and actually threading through their skin and like literally like bonding them together. Like, would that be disgusting? That would be gross, right? As long as we're not talking about the human centipede thing, that man, that's just no much. No, no. Right, that's <laughs> how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Could you embroider two people to get no I'm kidding? <laughs> or the human sent iPad. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. it sent emails and poops in Kyle's mouth. This is awesome. <laughs> sent iPad. <laughs> oh, you never what? saw that episode, Pete? Of what? Uh, is that of South, South Park? Park? No, yeah. I haven't seen. I oh yeah, watch, watch the human that sent way. iPad. Okay, that's, all right. that that's a real piece of culture you're missing out on <laughs> cinema history <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> all, right. all right william yes so i know you've told us we have it here it says that you do make dice bags patches banners stickers hoodies t-shirts tote bags and much more give us an example of some of the much more what kind of things aside from underwear and things like that but like what are some really interesting um you know things that you've embroidered well, I actually, I think one of the most interesting things I've embroidered here recently is a lady, a friend of mine that I met at Mile High Con, which is not a weed smoking convention. It's a sci-fi and steampunk convention. <laughs> uh, I the wrong had name. me embroider a bunch of roses on the back of her uh, uh, Victorian era dress. Oh. And she was a pretty good sized girl, so she had uh, the big poofy dress, and her shoulders must have been, you know, I can't even tell you exactly how wide. There's about 30 inches, and I had to embroider the entire back of nothing but roses and vines. Huh. So I wow. can do large custom pieces as well. They just take forever. And, and now you're charging enough for those, right? Because, I mean, I, I know what embroidering costs, and I, wow, like what you're charging. Well, I mean, the, the interesting thing about that is I don't lease or rent my equipment out from anybody. I own it flat out. Right. So I charge whatever I like, and for an example, one of my dice bags usually runs about fifteen to twenty bucks, depending on what material you're using. It probably just cost me three bucks to make that bag. Right. But what you're so saying, are you, how much okay. bucks is worth it? So the and bag costs how much? About three dollars, two to three dollars to make, depending on the material. Oh, so you actually make the bag itself? I make. I'm. I do everything. My okay. dice bags are a two-piece set. So I cut out the bottom. Embroider the sides, stitch it all together, straw, draw, uh, put a drawstring in it, ready to go. I oh, do it okay. all. All right. Okay. Nice. All right. All right. That's um, that's interesting. I, I can't imagine. See, I don't know. I I, I can sew buttons on, <laughs> and uh, I have like uh, I have my favorite pair of sweatpants that I have at home. That that and there are certain kind I can't find this kind anywhere else. Um, and I've looked. And uh, so there's a section on that keeps tearing loose, and I keep sewing it back up, right? Because I'm like, <laughs> and my wife's like, just throw the fucking things out and get new ones. And I'm just like, no, that no other kind are made like this. I can't find this kind right? anymore. Right? You can't find that level of comfort anymore. <laughs> right. So eventually, I'm gonna have to give up the ghost on those things. But and, and, I don't know, that's another I'm... thing I get asked to make all the time too is like custom pants, pants that are already come pre-made and like 
everyone's wanted me to make Jenko jeans, jean, uh, the Jenko jeans again. And I'm like, no, that's too much copyright. I can't do that. <laughs> hmm. So you like make clothes right. and everything. Oh yeah, I make custom cloaks, custom capes, custom tunics, yeah. custom uh, jackets, custom T-shirts, dice bags, tote bags, banners, flags, car stickers. You name it, I can possibly do it. Okay. You hear that, folks? Come on. Let's, let's get this man some business. Another interesting uh, thing I've got going on right now that I just picked up right before I went to Orlando last week, or two weeks ago, a friend of mine had brought me a piece of twine that's about an inch wide or a piece of uh, ribbon about an inch wide. He wants me to go every six inches and embroider a little dog on it. Uh-huh. It's okay. a, a dog about a half an inch tall on a piece of fabric an inch yeah. tall and about seven foot long. Okay. And what what is that for? Is that going to be like a but what is it? It's for? actually for his wife's birthday uh Christmas present. He's making her a brand new medieval fighting tunic and that's oh. going to be the trim for her tunic. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. And she's a dog lover. Okay. So, I just want everyone to keep this in mind like you have so many options. If you wanted to have something in anything embroidered that could be personalized for someone, it's Christmas time. So I, I mean I'm I'm serious, man. Let's we got let's get William some business, all right? I'm uh I'm getting ideas. Shit. I'm gonna say, hey, Jenny. Well, I actually mom's... just got done making a Gohan outfit for Dragon Ball Z for a friend of mine. So I do it all. Awesome. Hey, Mike. All right, let's let's get, what? Some ra- get yourself some Ravens gear there. Ah, <laughs> uh, gotta be careful. NFL licensing. You know, you can't. You got licensing yeah. issues. That was about to be my next thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> No, I, I I'm, not, I'm trying to get the man business, not sued. Okay. Right. <laughs> anyway, what? Let's switch gears for a second. Go to conventions. Yeah. <laughs> if you know you don't go to enough of those. Um, Pete and I, uh, we get to maybe two to four a year. That's unfortunate. Okay. We, I mean, we like to get to more. But get those we numbers work. up there. That's rookie yeah. numbers. <laughs> Well, we work full time, you know, so it's it's on our dime. I mean, we go to a couple of conventions where we get paid our, our admission and we go and we work them, you know, for for uh, various things. But you obviously are working your ass off. Are you doing this full time? This this whole embroidery thing? This is your full-time no. Gig? This is not a full time. I still have. I still work full time at Dairy Queen. Oh, Dairy Queen. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's doing what I like about Texas. Sorry. Doing <laughs> doing what? <laughs> I'm an assistant general manager. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. Cool. So, where, what, which conventions do you go to, or do you go regularly? I my very first convention when I started my business was Fort Collins Comic Con in Fort Collins, Colorado. I go back there every year without fail. Yeah, uh, I've been there that. now four years in a row. Shit. What we uh, we go to uh, Total Con, and uh, we go. Do you know where that is? Yes, I do. That's on, that's on my bucket list. Well, we'd love to have you, man. You should come out. And you probably would – They, I mean, the, the prices – I mean, there's a, a lot of the vendors there are pretty high-priced. I mean, your, your your prices seem seem really good. I bet you do good business there. Um, their vendor room is, is kind of small, and it's a lot of repeat – you know, it's a lot of like – The uh, same the, people you know, every year. So game, It's, it's know, the game same game. circle of friends every year. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is like they're the vendors that are in there. It's very yeah. just like, oh, it's it's people selling games and people selling games and people selling games. And it's <laughs> yeah. and there, there I, are, you know, uh, there I do are a lot of conventions some... in Colorado. Yeah. And there's like this one group of people that I run into every year at every single Colorado convention I go into. It's like a, it's called a con click or a vendor's click. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we we do Total Con, uh, we do Balticon, but that's like right in our neighborhood. I mean, that's you know, it's like right right in our backyard. Uh, right. We do. Um, we have done Dragon Con. We haven't done yeah. that in a little while. That's expensive. It's it's, it's hard to pull so off. It's very expensive. It's Are you, uh, do you do the dollars for booth space for that one? Ooh, no. Ooh. How much? Fourteen hundred. It was yeah. last year. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a it's an awesome convention, but it's just yeah. it's just too much it's I, I don't we'll get back there again soon the last time yeah. we went we got lucky there was uh I, there was a brand new hotel that opened up and i caught it before they realized what they were selling me and i got a i got a room during dragon con for like regular rate and uh <laughs> no it was awesome we we stayed we stayed right you, on site you lucked out yes, yeah we, we did yes we did and i'll tell you how lucky and, and then he like went up to the front desk 
I'd like to book this same time next year. Yeah, same price, same, everything. Same price, like, and they're like, no. no. <laughs> no. They're like, you got lucky. <laughs> it's like uh, everyone cause, gets one. Because <laughs> because it was funny too. Because I had called them. I had got my room booked. I had everything was set, and I called them about a month before the convention, and I said, hey, I'm just checking to make sure my, my booking is still good and my room's solved. Like, yep, yep, you're good. And I was like, same price, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah, you locked it in at this price. I'm like, okay, it's not going to change, right? Nope, nope, not going to change. It's just the price you booked it, and that's what you're going to get. I was like, all right, cool. And I was, because I was just, I was, <laughs> suck up, suckers, gotcha. <laughs> and they, I, they knew, no, nope, they knew, they knew. It was at that moment they realized they messed up. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, yeah, staying down there is, I don't know what it is. It's like you can't stay down at Dragon Con. That's if you can get a room down there, in like in the in the area proper. You can't stay there for less than $250, $300 a night. No yeah, way. that's yeah. about right. All right, so what other cons do you get to? Do you get any around uh, around the Baltimore, Washington, New York area? Not yet. I'm still relatively new on trying to figure out what cons are going to be good for me versus, you know, traveling costs and you know, mm -hmm. material costs and stuff Where like are you that. located again? Cheyenne, Wyoming. So you're in Wyoming. Where? It's how far home. are you? And, I mean, you know, this is a little bit ignorant, but uh, I don't even know where Game Hole Con is. That's up near... It's up near Wisconsin. I know that one. Uh, I went there once just to check it out, but now for the life of me, I cannot remember where it's at. I think it's so Wisconsin. we know we have some in with some people from Game Hole Con, also from uh, there's a con called Gary Con, is a complete role playing con. Yep, I've heard of that one. And um, yeah, but yeah, I know. Grand, I've know gone, gone uh, all over con. Colorado, all over the Denver area, all over you know. I've gone from one end of Colorado to the other, and everywhere in between. And, you know, this this year I've gone out further. You know, I've gone to Ranger Stop 7 in Orlando, Florida. I've mm -hmm. gone to Missoula, Montana for MizCon. You know, I went to Atoka, Oklahoma for a LARPing, a five-day LARPing co uh, convention. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to go to San Antonio, Texas to work at Con down there, but that Con canceled last minute. So okay. I'm just now starting to branch out more. But I'm getting up there to you guys. Trust me on that one. Okay. Pete, what is the con that Brian used to go to? We had an old old host of our show who lives in Texas. Oh, it's a it's a, a, a like a um, manga An anime con. Fest? Anime uh, fest or uh, San Japan. Ooh, I'm not sure. I can't remember. That's, I can't remember. that's the largest anime convention in Texas. Yeah, he could, probably. He it had to be in Dallas. It, is the one they, they normally Okay, then to. that would be the Dallas Anime Con. Uh, do, I forget its name because yeah. my former sister-in-law that I still keep in contact with, she goes every year to the large one that's in Dallas every year. Okay. Yeah. 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 So what, tell me, all right, give me, give me a horror story because they're, they're always fun, right? Oh, Mike, or, call them, or call them war stories, like convention, like a convention, yeah. like you, you went to a convention. I don't have any war stories, but I crazy. think I, I just recognized the pattern with the last two conventions I worked. The last two conventions just tried to give me PTSD because at Ranger Stop 7, someone pulled the fire alarm halfway <laughs> through day two of the convention mm. and we all had to evacuate. And I get off the plane. And as I'm setting up my vendor space at DocuCon a week later, someone pulls the fire alarm. Yeah, that yeah. seems to be a thing at a convention. And 7 o'clock the next morning, the same guy that just pulled the, the fire alarm for Docu Day 1 pulls it again for Day 2. What? <laughs> yeah, not kidding. How do you – I mean uh, – He was trying to deactivate the smoke alarms in the hotel room. That way he can vape and smoke weed in his hotel room. Oh, God almighty. Wow, wow two-time loser. Right. Uh, no real horror stories, you know. I've had a really – except for when I went to uh, World Banner Wars, which is the LARPing event in Atoka, Oklahoma, all my equipment broke, every single piece. I was there uh -huh. for – it was a five-day con. I got to work it for two days before every single piece of equipment I, I took broke. Mm. $2,500 worth of equipment down the drain. Oh, I mean like dead? Like like broke? Dead. Like... Broke. Gone. Jeez. Can't fix it. Oh. Oh dear! You never had anything. Have you ever had anything stolen at a convention? Mm, no, I usually take the uh, the important stuff back to my hotel room, like my machines and okay. my uh, okay. my computers. I always take that back with me every night. But you know, I think yeah. you know, like a few uh, like dice bags and you know stickers have ah, gone missing, yeah, but that's nothing that's yeah. like real important. Right. Yeah, that's that that's also right. doing business. 
What's your favorite con so far for profit wise? Ooh, profit. Probably Ranger Stop Seven in Orlando. This year it would have to be Ranger Stop Seven in Orlando. I made close to like fourteen hundred bucks. Nice. Okay. Uh, okay. But my very first booth I ever ran uh, was at an event called Clan in Alamogordo, well, just outside of Alamogordo, New Mexico. I made close to thirty two hundred dollars. Nice. Oh, wow. So which con do you like to go for for enjoyment? Enjoyment. Ooh. Pick your favorite baby. <laughs> <laughs> baby. I'm probably going to have to say VenCon in Loveland, Colorado. That one's always a nice one to enjoy. All sorts of old school vintage games. You can go buy the like the original Atari for like 20 bucks. Hmm. Oh, I need one of those. I think I have that on my phone though, so. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not the but same, twenty Mike. bucks, you know. Yeah, you, it's like a nostalgia trip from my '80s childhood. I'm like, I remember all this. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Not the same, Mike. All right, so we're getting close to be on time. So we're gonna just really quick touch on uh, both of you travel. He travels a lot extensively for work. So, uh, and I don't know if you cover this or not with your travel story recently, uh, William. You were talking about, but because I had. Just wanted to say, like, what were your worst travel experiences? So Ooh. I don't know if that counts or you have a different one just for – I have you know. a different one. Okay, go ahead. Uh, not con-related, though, but just travel in general. Last year – sorry, two years ago almost now, my brother got married in Texas, so I had to fly down for the, for the funeral. I mean, wedding, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and halfway through uh, from Denver to Dallas, where we were – sorry, from Denver – yeah, Denver to Houston – was our flight and halfway through it my plane got struck by lightning and dropped 900 feet oh oh, <laughs> oh, that's, oh God. that's definitely a worse that that qualifies all right my flight that's... was supposed to be two and a half hours at most it ended up being 12 oh because we had to the storm in around houston was so bad we couldn't land the first time so they rerouted us to shreveport louisiana oh. sat there on the tarmac for four hours waiting to get refueled Flew back around Houston two or three times trying to get the storm to clear. We couldn't land again, so they had to fly us to Little Rock. Oh, my oh, God. I was supposed to land in Houston, Texas about 8 o'clock in the morning. I didn't land till about 9 o'clock the next morning. I'll tell you, sitting on a beat tarmac. Beat that, Pete. I don't. I what? can't beat that. I can't beat that. Sitting on a tarmac <laughs> sucks. That I know. Yeah, it does. Because yeah. – I was in Shreveport, Louisiana. I could have gotten fresh beignets made across the street. <laughs> they would not let me leave the plane. No, they don't let you leave. You're stuck there, right? Using the bathroom is tricky because, you know, you're not really flying and stuff, so people can hear everything going on in that little bathroom, right? Not only that, but, <clears throat> you know, the air conditioning and stuff doesn't work the same when it's on the ground as when it's flying. So the, the, right. they've, got, they've got the temperature control pretty good on planes when it's in the air right but when it sits on a tarmac you're either <clears throat> freezing or burning up or, or something because it, it's not the same and uh it depends on the airport you're in but i've been sitting on a tar tarmac where we sat there for like we sat there for an hour because we couldn't take off for whatever reason and you start smelling jet fuel in the plane because you know it's pulling outside air in and you're on yep. a, you're, you're on a runway right so the plane starts to stink and it gets starts getting hot, and then people start getting agitated, and the noise level starts going up. It just starts becoming this like festering, you know. And if there's any kids on the plane, they start screaming. Sitting on tarmac sucks yeah, ass in a big way. I'd rather sit three, three times as long in the there air. There was a couple little kids in the back that just lost their minds. Yeah, <laughs> it's sitting on tarmac. That doesn't help time. anyone else either. Sucks. So, yeah. all right, what, let's switch gears for a second. What's uh, have either of you on travel uh, met any or, uh, famous people? Have you uh, been in a plane or at the airport and met some people famous? Not at the airport for me, but uh, I have met Neil McCoy at a gas station in Dallas, Texas. I met Harrison Ford at a gas station in Yellowstone. <laughs> wow. And I... And a funny con story, speaking of meeting a celebrity on traveling, day two of Ranger Stop 7 in Orlando, me and my assistant that I hired to, to work, help me work my booth were going to go an hour drive to Tampa to go to a party. And we're sitting there at her car talking, like, we got to go get this from storage before we go because I'm dressing up in a certain outfit, and we need to get to the storage, get, to the ho get home, get dressed, get in the car, and let's go. 
and behind me, so I was like, I want to go to Tampa. I've never been. Let's go to a party. And I turn around and I look, and it's the Yellow Ranger from uh, from Power Rangers Ninja Storm trying to hmm. jump in my friend's back seat. <laughs> and I'm like, not to you go tell your handler where you're going. You give him my contact information. You are not leaving with me till everyone knows where you're going. <laughs> so where where were you when this happened? Orlando, Florida. No, but at, at, and this was a, a, yet again at a gas station. No, this was out the front door of the hotel. Oh, okay. Because okay. me and my friend I'm had like, just walked out and got into her car, talking about what we need to do before we go to Tampa to Tampa for this party, and. Then just a Ninja Storm Yellow Ranger tried to jump in my friend's back seat. <laughs> I'm like, Pete, this guy hey, meets a lot of famous people at gas stations. What's up yeah. with that? Hey, you hey, need so to come travel with me, man. I'll hook you up. Who, who was the, who, who, never mind. I'm not going to go there. Anyway, so <clears throat> so I, um, let's see, uh, famous people. Uh, well, Mike, you and I met the amazing James Randy. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. He sat and talked with we us. We did. We, we met James Randi. Uh, we met, at, and we met. Well, you know, but that's almost like we're working. We went up and and met Bob Camp because we got him yeah. to come on the show. But guy who does Ren Stimpy, yeah, we, we've had him on the show. Um, and, uh, we met a whole I lot mean, of famous people. I think we were, yeah. we almost met the guy uh, Ben Browder plays uh, Crichton on uh, Farscape, but yeah. he was like swamped no, with people. People were talking to him, and I and we thought he looked like he was like pretty seriously drunk, right? That or he and he was such an asshole. I was like, man, I really don't want to say hi to him. Yeah, he was being so like, I'm so over this whole thing. Yeah, that yeah, was, was, was my experience meeting Damian Clark, the voice actor for Perfect Cell. Okay, he was yeah. a bit of a bit of a drunky Brewster. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, um, I guess that's it. All right, Everybody tell you what, as I'm pulling this game up, each of you, if you have your one, your top number one travel tip for everyone, you go. So uh, don't bring a jacket. Too hot. No jacket and a travel pillow. Good to go. Right. Unless it's now, winter and you're I'm, traveling I'm up north. Go, I'm gonna I'm gonna counter that with one thing here. I always carry a very light jacket in my book bag, right? I don't wear it. I put it in my book. It's one of the only things that goes in my book bag. I travel with a very small book bag, and I have uh I have a, a, a um meal bar, so like a protein bar. I keep in there. I keep uh. Uh, a very thin jacket, just in case I get on a plane. Because I, when I get on a plane, I wear like a short. I make sure I wear a short sleeve shirt, comfortable clothes, and tennis shoes. I never wear my boots on the plane because the, you have to unstrap them and all that shit. Um, but uh, the thin jacket's only in case it's really cold on the plane because it, it can. It sometimes, sometimes it can get really cold on the plane. But it's, it, you're right. It's very thin. I don't wear a heavy jacket because you're right. You will sweat your ass off. Um, and the only other thing is if you ever. If you can afford it, now I get it for free because I work for the government. But if you can afford it, get that that uh, TSA pre check. That is so awesome. Yep, I got straight through the. I, I bought that for Orlando when I flew back from Orlando to Denver. In and out, five minutes. It is awesome. You you don't have to take you don't have to take your shoes off. You don't have to take your your computer out of your bag. You don't have to do any of that. It's awesome. Yep. Okay. Travel light. Yep. Travel, Travel light. light. Travel light. I am going to start the game. Okay. P Peter, uh, Let me do we need ready. to do the music thing? I yeah, have a bunch of stuff I could read. Just tell me when you're ready. All right. I am ready. All right. Here you go. Hey, everybody. It is game time with the Mythwits. I am Mike Kafis, your game master, and today we are playing... The Correlation Cogitation Station. Okay. Tell you know what cogitation cool. means. You owe somebody else 50 cents. So uh, I'm going to read this really quickly, uh, and then we're going to have a discussion. We need to have a little bit of an educational session about correlations because it can get a little uh, dodgy. So a correlation is a mutual relationship or a connection between two things, two separate things that happen, Okay. While this relationship can be strong in either direction, meaning as one thing happens more often, the other thing happens just as often, okay, or, and that's a positive correlation, and as one thing increases and happens, the other thing decreases at a similar rate, okay, that is a negative or inverse correlation, okay. Uh, I'm going to 
now show you really quickly. I will share my screen and show you a, an example of a correlation. All right, Peter, I'm trying this. Oh, I'm you're gonna hit share the right screen. Button. Okay. What? Go ahead. Is that not good? It's just do it. <laughs> just do it. Well, this setup, it's it's a little tricky, but go ahead. All right, I'm gonna try. Where is it? Okay. That's the screen I want to share. All right, so let me try. Oh, did I screw it up bad, or is uh, it okay? It's, oh, shit. Okay, hold on. Let me, um, yeah, I, I really wish, you know, like when you want to do this kind of stuff in the future, you kind of need to tell me that you're going to be doing a screen share or something like okay. that. Okay. Uh, I can make it smaller too if you no, want. No, don't, 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 don't. Mike, what do we talk about? Okay, sorry. You remember? You, you bitched about other people doing it at the con? I'm being, being a good boy. Okay. <laughs> you can't mess with this thing while I'm messing with the thing because it messes me up. All right. You did great, Pete. I love you. All right, hold on, hold on. It's not done yet. It's not done yet. Give me a second here. <sighs> okay, screen share, and then that goes down there. All right, uh, let me do that. In the future, we plan this out, okay? Thank you. You're wonderful. Listen, <laughs> Linda. Hey, Linda, listen. All right, and then I need to do, uh, let's see if this screws anything up. Let's see if I do this and this. Hey, there you go. All right, Mike, uh, uh, you're good to go. Okay. Uh, so as you see then, because I don't see it on the uh, on the, the feed, but that's okay. I'm going to be good. I'm going to trust you. You see U.S. spending on science, space, and technology, okay? Yep. As U.S. spending on science, space, and technology goes up, suicides by hanging, strangulation, and suffocation also go up at an extremely similar rate, okay? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, in this case, there would be a 99% correlation. Yeah. Okay? Very strong. The strongest. Almost a perfect correlation. Okay? Now, I will tell you guys, as an example, okay, which item is a positive or if it's a negative correlation. Now, I'm not going to be sharing each individual one with you guys. This was only the examples, Pete. So okay. I didn't, um, if you wanted to switch back, we can, or if you wanted to keep that up there, I don't want to try not to do, make you do extra work. What's up? I don't know. Whatever. No, we can switch back. You want to switch back? Are you going to show any more of these is what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to show okay. any more. Okay. Well, then we'll switch. Okay. Switching back is easy enough. Okay. That I can just unshare, stop sharing the screen. Okay. There we go. All right. So, guys, and, and it, it, as you saw, if it was a negative correlation, okay, one would go up and one would go down. Okay, they would crisscross. Okay. All right. So, I will tell you if it's a negative or positive one. But you must make a guess as to the strength of the correlation, okay? I've chosen these items, and that is called a coefficient. It is either from a zero to a one. I've only chosen ones with stronger end correlations, like between 0. .50 and one. Okay. All right? Just to make it a little easier. Okay. okay. So you must give your answer as a point five zero two eight, you know, uh, or point nine or point eight or point seven zero or uh, seven five, whatever you think it is. All right. So you're going to give us two um, things, and we're going to tell you is it a positive yeah. or negative, and how strong is uh, the coefficient? You don't have to tell me if it's a positive or negative correlation. I'm going to let you know this is a positive correlation. It's one thing goes up, this thing goes down. The reason is I want you to understand the correlation because also we also know that correlation does not necessarily equal causation, causation. Right? Right. right? Okay. However, science is a fickle bitch. So in addition to one of you earning a point for coming closest to the most accurate correlation coefficient, one of you will also – earn a point for the best logical explanation for this correlation. It doesn't have to be right. It doesn't have to be great. Just as long as it's a good argument. As long as it's a good, solid, funny, interesting argument. Okay. Okay? Sounds like All a right. point, Dan. All right. Good. All right. Here we go. 
Uh, so each, each of you can earn up to two points per round. And we have a bunch of questions. We'll sort of see how far we need to go with in the interest of time, because I know this took a long time to explain all this. My <laughs> fault for you. Okay. Um, the first one is the marriage rates in Florida. Okay. The marriage rate for <laughs> in Florida correlate strongly with positively with murders by hanging, strangulation, and suffocation. So depending upon whether marriages go up or go down, murders and strangulation murders by hanging and strangulation and suffocation go down. And that means murders by hanging and strangulation. Not suicides, mind you. Right. Just, right. just murders. Murders. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll, we can start with uh, William because you're our guest. William, uh, first, if you want to tell me, or you can give your rationale and then your correlation, or if you wanted to give your correlation coefficient first, that, again, 0. 0.5 or point, point, not, point yeah, blank, blank. He's, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Well, the reason why I believe it to be like a 0. 0.8 on the reason why it's so strongly connected is because too many people are getting married these days that don't really know each other. And then when they finally move in, they're like, oh, you weren't the girl I was dating last week who lived with her mother. Now you are a complete slob in my house. That's the reason why it's so strong at a point eight. Okay, so you're saying that when marriage rates go up, the murders are going up, and these men or women are getting strangled and suffocation because they don't know each other as well. Yep. And they, 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 they were sold a bill of goods. So, yep. Okay, got it. All right. Ed, you're saying a point eight. Now you can give me a point eight. What you know? Because it's a two digits. So point. Oh, you're saying point eight eight. How about that? Point eight eight. All right. Uh, Pete. All right. I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm gonna say point nine five. Do you want me to be funny or do you want me to be serious? I want you to give the the answer that you think you're gonna get a point with both of you. <laughs> well. I have a serious one. I'm going to go with the funny one. Um, I'll tell you the funny one, and that's the one we're going to base my points off of or not. And then I'll say the serious one before you reveal it, okay? <laughs> All right. Anyway, listen. No. Listen. Listen. <laughs> the reason why it's so high. <laughs> you may not know. Well, you know this. I used to live in Florida when I was a kid. And one of the things that I know about Floridians is that uh, is that they're really a bunch of hillbillies, right? They call them flatbillies is what they are, right? And it's, it's most of Florida, a lot of people don't realize this because they go to Orlando or Miami or whatever. Dude, you go one mile out of side of city limits and it's banjo territory. You got hicks right. riding alligators. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's, they actually, the reason why they kill each other is because they're so familiar. They know each other because it's every, <laughs> they're marrying their cousins and the, oh, what happened? <laughs> Okay. When did we start talking about my family in Arkansas? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. My family's from West Virginia. No, they. What is going on? What the fuck? The, okay. Now he's on. checking. Hold on. I'm coming. I'm His coming. Things wasn't wasn't unplugged. Am I in? Uh, where I don't think we're being broadcast right now. Technically, he's the one. Hold on. no, there he goes. I'm back. There we go. Dude, I don't okay. know what happened. Light stream just. Boop. Yeah, we we could I could see on the feed that you were looking to see what the hell was going on and all. It was okay. just he and I alone in the room. Okay. No, it was. It's fine. It, the light stream just just pooped on me. That's all right. Anyway, so that's my that's my funny answer. Uh, okay. and that's what I'm going so, with. So that's either points or not. But let me tell you what the real reason is before you before you uh, give them out. All right. In the interest of time, hurry up. Okay. The real reason is is because old people move to Florida and retire, and they that's why they and they get married as they get older. It's like their second or third or fourth marriage or whatever, and then they wind up dying together. Old people kill themselves they a lot. Die together. Yeah. What by hanging and strangling? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Jesus did, Christ! You did say murder. Well, you know. <laughs> no. okay. Wait. All right. Well, see, the, I'm good. Science, being the fickle bitch that it was, is going with William on on the re, on the rationale. So that gets okay. him a point. All right. However, Peter, uh, even though you were not very rational, you were closer to the point. Uh, uh point. Damn it! Where is it? Okay, my mouse, mouse, other mouse. 
It is the other mouse. Oh, you were right. Oh, the point nine one. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So uh, he said point eight eight. Pete, it was point nine one eight eight. 89, 90, 91, 95, 94, 95, Now, is there actually 40, a correlation, or was this just a uh, – was there a causation, or was that just a, just a correlation? There is no causation on these. These are just or any of them. Oh, okay. Oh, so there's okay. no chance that there's, a, that there's a causation. Gotcha. Okay. Actually, hold on. 91, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, I apologize. Uh, William, you actually won both points. Damn it. My fault. Hey, William. My, my math skills aren't that bad. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Point eight eight. I apologize. Yes. Hey, point eight eight. I was looking at the wrong. Um, I was looking at a, a different number. Okay. Hey, wait. So, you get we're this. Going to, on, huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> very, very nice. Ding. Let can, can we move on to number two now? Yes, we can move on to number two. Great. Okay. Num number two. Uh, this is an inverse. Okay, so it's just the, the, the opposite thing is, is one is going up, the other is going down. So is U.S. spending on science, space, and technology, is, is the, the more money the U.S. pumps into money, pumped into science, space, and technology, the per capita consumption of, of whole milk in the U.S. goes down. Hmm. All right. So U.S. spending goes up. U.S. drinking milk goes down. Pete, <laughs> take a crack. Take a crack. Uh, I'm going to say 0. 0.65. All right. You're saying 0. 0.65. Right, right. Um, okay. And I'm going to say well, it's, uh, it's all the money that NASA's putting into the education of cows, and they've been protesting – and boycotting uh, milk production, which drives the price up, and people can't afford it. Okay, so part of the uh, technology is pumped into the education for, no, the, for Yeah, cows. genetic modification. The cows are becoming smarter. They've realized okay. that they are a beast of burden, and they no longer want to produce milk. They've been striking. So the price of milk goes up, and people can't afford to buy it. I mean, it's clearly self -aware, the Self-aware self cows. cows. Yeah. Got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh no, eat more chicken. <laughs> uh, your, your, your rationale was very moving. Moving. Uh, William? You so punny. I'm going to have to say a point eight zero, and the reason why we're giving more money to them and not to the cows is we want to slap them alien cheeks. That's why. Let's slap them alien cheeks, okay. <laughs> Ah, so space technology, we're pumping money into that, uh, getting out into space, and, and we're, that means money is being taken away from agriculture in a way, right? Yep. Mm. We want to slap them alien cheeks. We want to be all Star Trek in this guy. Slap them. <laughs> because then the aliens, we can, won't come down and uh, and We didn't find anything cows. at Area 51, so now we got to go up there and find it. Mm. <laughs> all right. So, God, that's a tough one. Self-aware cows. Oh, and that. Hold on a second. I gotta feed this in the computer. Boop, beep, boop, bop, beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 beep, bop, boop. Okay, I got the answer. All right. So Pete, you do do get a point for your okay. rationale. I did like how the cows became self-aware. And uh, William, you were closer on that one with a nice negative, which you didn't have to say negative. I understood that, but it's a point nine eight correlation. Oh, I mean, shit. I mean, them cows was self aware. Hey, so William, you get one of these, and I get one of these. There you go. There we go. <laughs> All right, number three. Okay, the divorce rate in in the. The uh, land in which Pete and I live, Maryland, the Maryland. divorce rate in Maryland, to which we have e – each of us have contributed to. <laughs> Me too, but I don't live in Maryland. Hey, between us, there's three. Yeah. <laughs> Drivers killed in collisions with cars, pickup trucks, or vans. Okay, so we, the divorce rate goes up. Drivers killed in collisions, cars, pickups, and vans hmm. goes up. Is if, if the divorce rate goes down, so do the amount of people killed okay. in collisions with cars, pickup trucks, or vans. All right. All right. So we can start with William this time. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to have to go high on this one, a point nine zero. 
Well, the reason okay. why is the wives texting their husbands, are you going to be home with the bread anytime soon? And they're busy texting and can't look at the road. <laughs> um, Been there, done that. I had the car wreck to prove it. <laughs> okay. Wow. I like it. Okay. All right. Uh, blame the wife. I love it. Which, which then feeds into more divorce. Right. Yeah. Because okay. if the person dies, you still have to go through the divorce hearing to get remarried right. again. See, now, if this was yeah. in Florida, it would explain it clearly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. I'm yeah. going to say that I'm, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go point eight. Okay. What did you say, William? Oh, shit. He said, there goes William. William, we lost William for a second there. What did William say? Ooh, we lost William. He said point nine. He went with a point nine zero. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna go point eight zero. Oh. Right, good. I'm gonna stick with it. I, I just want to get the same number he gave. It'd be dumb. Um, and I'm gonna say that uh, it has to do with. Um, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm. He pissed off the. He pissed off all the feminists. So I'm gonna piss him off too. Uh, here, I don't. Oh, wow. I don't. Well, I don't really believe this. this is a joke, right? I'm, we're, we're telling jokes. I don't. Sure. I certainly don't believe this because my wife's never had an accident. But here, here's my reasoning. Uh, it, it's because as when they get married, they can afford to have two cars in the family, so you got more women on the road, and obviously that's why you have more accidents. Uh, okay, so the divorce. Uh, what? He's but not. They get to married. Come in the room, they get right? listen. Listen. They get married, right? People get married. Right. Now you have more income. So uh -huh. more women have car, more cars on the road with women in them. And that's obviously why you have more accidents. What does that have to do with the divorce rate, though? What did, I don't know. What did the question have to do with the divorce rate? You said marriage. <laughs> divorce rate in Maryland. Goes up. Drivers killed in collisions. Divorce rate goes up. Drivers killed in collisions. Right. Oh, it shit. Remember, it's not the same people who get married die in the car crashes. They might. Of course they do. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, hey. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah, I, you, know, right. you know Wait, what it is, Mike? Zero. Part of it is is I get distracted with trying to like fix cameras and stuff, so it's it's hard for me to keep track of, of everything that's going on. Uh, yeah, on. so Pete, uh, Pete gave Mine's some way answer off. that you didn't understand. So yeah. um... I think William's going to get the points for that, unless, my, unless I got... Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, Ed, Pete, uh, Ed William, the divorce rate in Maryland and drivers killed in collisions with a car, pickup truck, or a van, the correlation between those two is at a point eight seven. So that definitely gives William the point. Damn. On the point right. eight seven, on the, from point nine zero. Um, and yeah, I, I gotta go. I liked gotta, his answer better. Gotta go with his answer, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was distracted, man. Come on. Give me a break. But he did You were right. distracted. Did you got killed in the car wreck because you're answering that text message. I know how it is. <laughs> yep. All right. So, all right. We're moving on to number four. Oh, Let's come see. on. What? What happened? Nothing. It just This fucking light stream oh. is being a dick tonight. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yep, there it goes again. Jesus fucking Christ. And maybe he'll be back. There he goes. There he goes. Okay. <sighs> This dude, this so, this is fucking killing me, dude. Hold on, I, now I gotta fix a bunch of shit. Okay. Damn it. Well, it's all right. Uh, see if you can. I know you're. I'll explain this to you again, but for for William, uh, new passenger car sales in the U.S. Okay, so the amount of cars that are sold. No, he's gone. I I I can't take this. This light stream is is killing me. Oh boy. <laughs> this is crazy. Sorry folks. I it, this we're using this new program and it's being finicky. I, don't, I haven't had this problem before. Um but it is it's it's acting crazy. So anyway, oh, so let's instead of getting dry air, let's let's. Uh, I think what we're gonna do, uh, William, since you're so far ahead of me, <laughs> that you're like miles ahead of me, I think we're just gonna call it 
but we're gonna call you the winner because you've got five to my one. <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me, Good Stan. Job. Hey, you know what you get for that? Hold on. There it is. There you go. Thank you to all my wonderful fans. <laughs> Good. Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right, so while we're waiting for Mike to come back, let's do this. So, um, where where can we find you? Where we can find can, where can we find Dragon Wick Embroidery? Mostly on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter right now. My website is down for repairs. You know, my uh, the software I was using for it does not tend to like me that much. Just like Lightstream here doesn't like us tonight. Yeah, yeah, what the hell? Right. So pretty much Dragon Wick Embroidery, and that's spelled W Y C K for Wick. Mm -hmm. on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can also probably find me on um, about to start a Twitch channel for my shop as well, okay. where I'm going to be doing nothing but Twitch streaming, crafting supplies and tutorial videos and stuff like that. Oh, cool. But primarily on Instagram and Facebook. So how, do, like, so if I wanted to, if I wanted to buy something from like, like I'm Joe Schmo out there and I want to get in touch with you to buy, you know, your, your wares, get something, get you to make something. How do I do, how do we make that happen? Email dragonwickembroidery at gmail.com is a good way to start or through Facebook messages or okay. Instagram messages. Okay. And and look – oh, hold on. Here's Mike. Hey, Mike, we just wrapped the game up, okay? William won. Five to one. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. What happened? Did your computer die? No. I, I just, just was waiting that long and kept refreshing and refreshing and refreshing to get back into the room. Jesus Christ, this program is being a pain in the ass. We got to, I don't know what we're going to do, man. Anyway. Yeah. <sighs> so, <laughs> well, it's the first All time right. it's done that. It's been pretty good. Yeah. It's awesome hanging out with you guys tonight. I was oh, yeah. like, I got off work. I had just enough time to come set up my computer and get ready for this. I'm like, now it's time to sit here and play the waiting game for these guys to email me. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Well, we're no, glad we, you made it, man. We had yeah. fun. I wish we had more time for the game, but uh, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. games you are can, games. There's the, where there's one, there's more. So yeah, you can. I have eight. I have eight total. So we have another whole full game full of this. So okay, cool, cool. Stay tuned for more of the correlation yeah. cogitation station. So we we were just telling uh, we're telling the folks where they could get get the stuff and and so it, Dragon Wick. I'm say, say that again. What's your email address again? Dragon Wick Embroidery at Gmail dot com. Okay, and, uh, and just W Y C K, correct? Yep, right? W Y C K. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, you know, just and, and you like all right. So, do William a favor because you know he's cutting you all such a good price. Get him good pictures. Like when he had to cut those swords out of that picture, that was a pain in the ass, right? Yes, go it was six hours worth of work. <laughs> go find a picture of just the thing you want in the highest resolution you can get because it makes it easier. Talking from an artist standpoint, get the highest resolution you can find because then that makes it easier for him to vectorize it. And if you know right. how to make vector stuff, start with that and send him the vector. That would be so much easier. Yeah. Send me a vector, send me whatever you got. As long as I don't have to like go with Google Paint or Microsoft yeah. Paint and go in through individual lines to make them thicker and to where they will stand out, we are peachy. The thicker the lines, the cleaner the cut, the better. Right. What's your vector, right Victor? Yeah, excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, Short thank you very much. <laughs> let's let's uh, let's wrap this show up. Uh, let's do this. All right, everybody, you have just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits' love over the entire planet. Tweet us at Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. Mythwits is a TSR Podcast Network production. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows like Game School, the show where the uh, where they interview designers about their tabletop RPG, deep dive into the mechanics, make up a character, and play a short demo of the game to see how it works in real time. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't change it, and don't nano-sew it to yourself because that might not come out and it might tear your skin off if you tried to take it off if you got sick of the shit. <clears throat> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike? It's not a tumor. Oh, God. <laughs>